Does the Bible condone slavery? Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I'm going to take you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we're not skipping anything, and today is proof of that. This is a hot-button issue, and we've got some thin skin here in America when it comes to the word slavery. I've probably already upset some people just by mentioning the very word slavery. Well, the Bible gave some laws about slavery, but it may not be exactly what you think. Look at Exodus chapter 21 and pick up in verse 1. Now these are the judgments which you shall set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he shall serve six years, and in the seventh he shall go out free and pay nothing. If he comes in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. But if the servant plainly says, I love my master and my wife and my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door and to the door or to the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him forever." Wow, that is, at first glance, you read that and we start reading about service, you know, being a servant, being a slave, and we bristle. And let me say from the onset, before you go getting upset with me, I hate slavery, I hate racism, and I don't want any part of it in our country. I'm totally against any racism and I'm totally against any slavery at all, period. But I want to point out to you that what God was doing was actually unheard of in the ancient world. God just said that if you take a slave, he's talking to his people, the Israelite people in the ancient world that was full of slavery. These people themselves, the Israelite people, were just in slavery for 400 years. And now God tells them that if they take a slave, he is only to serve for six years. And the seventh year, he's to go free. You can't find that anywhere else in the ancient world. You see, what God did was not, he didn't come up with the idea of slavery. Slavery was already in the world. What God just did was he sanctioned it down. And not only did he sanction it down in its term, but he's also sanctioning it in the way that the slaves would be treated. As a matter of fact, many times in the Bible when we see this idea of servitude, sometimes that is in the sense of employment. Now, I'm not saying that it's always in the sense of employment. Sometimes there were people who were forced into slavery. Sometimes they were sold into slavery, just like what we'll read here in a moment about a female servant being sold into slavery. Sometimes your mom and dad could sell you. In the ancient world, your mom and dad could sell you into slavery. That could happen. Sometimes you would sell yourself into slavery because you needed to pay off a loan or because you needed a loan to begin with. So you would would offer yourself as a servant. Sometimes people would even offer themselves as a servant for some sort of a reward, like possibly a a daughter, one of the daughters of the master. This guy has a daughter that you want to marry, so you offer yourself as a servant of this master for a certain amount of time. But you never see that as a nation, that a servant would, that a, a slave would have a limited term of six years. But that's exactly what God just did. You see, he's not permitting slavery and saying, hey, go out and get you a slave. He's saying in the ancient world where there were slaves, you need to make sure to treat them fairly and free them after they have served you, after they've paid their debt or whatever reason they've gone into slavery, you need to set them free in the seventh year. Because the message of the Bible is not how to go into slavery. The message of the Bible is always how to be free. Jesus said that if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You see, you and I have been slaves to sin. Jesus said that who you obey, you're a sin to them. He said, don't you know? Who you obey, that's who you're a slave to. So when we obey our sin, we're actually a slave to sin. But God has offered to free us from that. We don't have to be, you know, the world's idea of slavery is kind of eternal. It is uh, lifelong. This person's a slave and they're always going to be a slave. And it would be extremely difficult to get out of that slavery. But God has said that the Son will set you free. And if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. Let's look a little more about the slavery. I want to bring up another point. Look at this in verse 7. If a man sells his daughter to be a female slave, she shall not go out as as male slaves do. If she does not please her master who has betrothed her to himself, then she shall then he shall let her be redeemed. 
He shall have no right to sell her to a foreign people, since he has dealt deceitfully with her. And if he has betrothed her to his son, he shall deal with her according to the custom of daughters. If he takes another wife, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, and her marriage rights. And if he does not do these three for her, then she shall go out free without paying money. Again, in the ancient world, I know when we first read that, you're like, oh, a female slave, ah, that's kind of grotesque. Well, I mean, I agree with you. There's, there's part of that that makes me bristle when I first read it. And I'm not standing before you today claiming to have all the answers, but I am pointing some things out. Did you notice that, again, in the ancient world, we're, we're going to hate to hear this, but in the ancient world, women did not have rights. Most of the time, in most of the world, women were viewed as property. And God just said here, don't deal deceitfully with her. And if you do, she has the right to leave and she doesn't have to pay anything to leave. Did you also notice that this, that talking in talking about this female slave, it was really more in the terms of marrying her? That if you said you were going to marry her, but then you decided not to, you decided not to marry this girl. So you've bought her from her parents or, or whoever. You've bought this girl to marry her, but then you decided not to marry her. Well, then you still have to give her food and clothing and all the regular things that the wife would get. If you bought her for your son, according to God's word, if you bought her for your son, but then your son, uh, you bought her for your son, you have to treat her according to the, like a daughter. You got to treat her like a daughter. That's what God's word just said. See, God was doing something different than what the rest of the world had done. He was sanctioning slavery, and he was also pointing out this idea of servitude, more like employment than it was slavery. We see that the, this girl was bought to be betrothed, to, to be married, or to marry one of the sons in the house. Now, that idea is totally foreign to us, but that wasn't foreign in the Old Testament. It wasn't foreign in the ancient world, and God says, if you do it, you better treat her right. And we even see that the in the first section when we were talking about this male slave that if somebody buys a slave and he's supposed to be set free seven years later, he ha actually has the opportunity if he falls in love with the master and says, I want to stay with the master. Just stop right there for a moment. You mean to tell me that the master should treat the slave so well that he might actually want to stay and not leave and have his own freedom? And if that does happen, here's the procedure to do it. Take that servant, take him to the doorpost or to the door and pierce his ear with an awl. Take him to the judges and let everybody know. Make it public. Let everybody know that he wants to be a servant to this master for his whole life. You know, I think that another part of the reason that God didn't just completely get rid of the idea. I mean, that, that is a, a legitimate question right now, isn't it? Why didn't God just say, no slavery in Israel whatsoever? And friends, I, I, I don't have all the answers. I do know that God's ways are higher than my ways, and I know that what God does, He does for our good, and even some of the things that He allows, He allows for our good. He didn't create us in slavery, but man came up with the idea of slavery. Now God is sanctioning that idea, and even later in time, in, in world history, we see that it, God's word was used to abolish slavery. So I can't answer the question, why didn't God just say no slavery at all? But I can point out to you that he said, treat the slaves well, let them go free, do not make this a lifelong thing. And, and later we'll see again throughout the Old Testament that the master should treat the slave well, you shouldn't mistreat the, the slave. But here's another point for you. It also points to our relationship with Jesus. Jesus who has purchased us. And you know what? Jesus who has purchased us, now we have the opportunity to say we want to be his servant forever. That's a bond servant. The idea of the one who was taking his ear and put it in the doorpost and put it all through his ear. That was to signify, hey, I am this, I am the master's. I am, I'm his forever. Well, friends, Jesus has purchased us and now we can be his forever. But we have to choose to do that. Jesus isn't going to make you do it. You have the right to go free if you want. But if you want to be a servant of him, you can be. Think of it from the other side. What if the master didn't want the servant? What if he didn't like the servant? What if they didn't get along? What if he didn't want him around? Do you see the master would have just as much right to be like, I know you might want to stay here, but you can't. I don't want you here. You have to go. So the servant would say, I love my master. I love my wife. I love my kids. I want to stay here. But the master had to agree to that. I want you to think about this. 
Jesus, the master, has agreed to that. He's paid the purchase price. You have the right to go free if you want. But if you want to stay with him, he wants to have you around. Isn't that interesting to see that God left slavery in the Old Testament, but it does help give a typology. It gives us a picture of our relationship with him as we are servants to the Most High, and he is such a loving master that we want to stay with him forever and ever for all of eternity. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow with more of Exodus chapter 21. See you then.